For those people who are interested in joining your meetings, can I just ask, are they really 8 p.m. GMT? Yeah. Are they are. Yeah. So with the time change for US this week, they're still 8 p.m. GMT. I should probably put UTC. I think we're okay. going to try and keep it to, to UTC. So he's messed up a lot of our um, calendar appointments at work. So I just to yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. GMT and UTC can only differ by, is it point nine seconds? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so some people read GMT as being uh, whatever the daylight saving is when it switches to BST. Yeah. Is it defined as a government of GMT? UTC, Zulu time, and so on. Yep. Um, with the, uh, the add-on project, are you, are you going to sort of set up a repository that will be like last wave only good? Uh, are you actually going to host all this stuff and have an open repository where you can find every, every piece of software? Kind of. Um, we're, all the quality software that has an active maintainer is going to make its way into slash dev and slash stable, which are the two IPS repos that the whole operating system comes from. So I, I use Exim. Uh, I hate Sendmail. So um, the first thing I want to do is get Exim into Open Indiana and to just be able to type package install uh, Exim straight after an install of the operating system. Um, so the software is going to flow into the main repos, but we will have to have a staging area for uh, stuff that is still, you know, being worked on. Um, there is a project Spec Files Extra, which is compatible with Solaris 11 Express. Uh, we're working that that's got a lot of Oracle people contributing to it, and we're collaborating with them to make sure that the Spec Files work on both Oracle Solaris and Open Indiana, so that you can um, use those specs. A spec is basically a specification file that's used by a tool called Package Build uh, to build the bit of software and it will download it from the internet, unpack it and build it um, to a recipe. And uh, The problem with Spec Files Extra was it became a bit of a dumping ground and people would write specs, pop them into Spec Files Extra and then they would uh, never be updated and we really want to avoid that because we want this to be uh, to get security and bug fixes primarily. Um, so first, th initially, not everything is going to make its way in, but uh, we will have kind of un an unsupported repo loaded with software that you can just type package install. And if you need something like FFmpeg, you know, it really doesn't matter if it's getting security or bug fixes or if it's slightly old, you could get that from our unsupported repo. And this kind of stuff is going to be forthcoming. Um, there's been a bit of a log jam uh, with getting this uh, sorted because um, uh, choosing a compiler and making sure that our compiler choice is compatible with what spec files extra are doing and making sure that the paths for like the, the GCC libraries and libraries in general are going to be compatible between the two things. So um, that slowed things down and although Open Indiana has been that six months, uh, Open in the OI add-on consolidations hasn't got off the ground because of this stall, uh, but we're expecting that to all be resolved very soon. Um, we have kind of for now, I'm trying to push people to use GCC um, for this stuff, and possibly we're going to shadow compile everything with LLVM and Clang, so that when the time comes that we should switch to this shiny new compiler, that we can do it without too much pain. Yep. Does it run in VirtualBox? It certainly does. In fact, I completely missed out a whole section of the presentation. Uh, I just, I thought this was going to overrun massively, so I powered through it, but I actually have. Um, Virtual box installed with Open Indiana 148, so why not boot it up? I mean, I, I got Open Solaris on my machine, so I'm asking whether I could run Open, Open Indiana in VirtualBox. Yeah. yeah. You can actually um, upgrade from Open Solaris to Open Indiana. Uh, you can't upgrade from Solaris 11 Express to Open Indiana because they've got a higher ZFS version than we, ha we have um, by one version. So um, there's not a huge change, but unfortunately it, it not makes... I'm not going to risk it, I'm running VirtualBox. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> the extra parts of the operating system, the user land, the Sun Speedware software, and the X. Yep. You, at this time, you see no problem getting it still from the Sun... 
location? It's all still being developed in the open and um, we haven't had any signals uh, to suggest that it's going to be going away. Um, I think Oracle's biggest concern with OSNet was that um, it contains some incredibly valuable IP uh, like ZFS, which was um, Nexenta kind of shot themselves in the foot by starting a commercial enterprise selling storage appliances that compete with Sun and Oracle. Um, I think possibly Nexenta are the reason that OSNet got yanked. Um, it didn't make sense for Oracle to, uh, to feed something directly into their competitors. Um, which is a shame, but everything else, the value uh, in closing it, it doesn't make sense. And it's all open source software anyway, primarily. Um, Cayman and PKG are really the only ones that contain pure Sun stroke Oracle intellectual property. Um, but they're not, not major systems. You mentioned the next release is going to be based on 151E. Yes. They're going to get the codes released between 147 and 151. Uh, OSNet won't be there, um, we'll be based on Lumos, um, okay, but that's the... What, that's the question, why it will be called 151 if it hasn't got the differential? Because of all the Oracle, the, the rest of the software on top. OSNet's only one piece of the pie, uh, some freeware, JDS, um, userland, all that other stuff, that still uses Oracle build well, numbers. Zepu, ZFS version will be the new one, you won't have to encrypt the ZFS. Correct. Which is uh, a shame. I only installed this the other day, so, uh, well, yesterday actually. I imagine X is just waiting to start up, but uh, let's see. being slow. There's a little problem with coming from sleep, or not from sleep, from basically screen set on the virtual box. And yeah. I had it myself but I noticed that it, it was actually logged on the even book list. Well it's uh, it's identical almost to um, the internal build of uh, what would have been Open Solaris build 148. So um, if it's slow in VirtualBox, uh, Open Solaris build 148 would have been slow in VirtualBox. <laughs> so let's see if I can fix this. Uh, there we go. So here it is. Um, what can I show you about Open Indiana? Open Indiana. Uh, got some copyright notices there. I'll show you the Zpool version. Here are the um, Zpool versions. I don't know if you can read that, but we're all the way up to version 28, which is multiple VDAV replacements. Um, obviously, any new uh, ZFS updates like encryption go into OSNet, uh, we're not going to have. Um, that gives Oracle their competitive advantage. More than happy for them to have that. Uh, if you need encryption, um, probably going to have to pay for uh, Solaris 11, but um, for a lot of purposes this stuff is uh, it's fine. It was a word before that Oracle eventually released the code after the release of Solaris mm. That's too long sort of to read the line, so... Who knows? That's exactly um, what I was expecting to hear. <laughs> yeah, it's possible. Uh, there are some people within Sun who, where I've had conversations, and their personal opinion, not the official line, is that they their feeling is that Oracle will do this because uh, um, they've said they would. And uh, corporations, for example, big enterprise, they want the source code because they want their lawyers to pour through that stuff so that they know who to blame when there's an issue. Um, and their competitors provide the source. So th there is, um, they are providing the source at the moment, I think, under a contributor's... There's another uh, reason for that. Fragmentation could be avoided if the source code is released, even subsequently. Yeah. So that basically, it does not do find yourself in a place where you have binary which won't run, run on, on the other one. Yeah. 
Well, we, we should be able to keep binary compatibility. 